Hello everybody, Carl Larson here with part 3 of the After Effects tutorial series Building a Cube World in After Effects. In the past two episodes I showed you how to create a camera aware 360 degree world without the use of a plugin. And I told you to stick around for this episode where I'd show you how to do something with a cube world that you can't do with Horizon. Which was a true statement at the time of the recording. I couldn't figure out how to do this shot with Trapcode Horizon. And just so I don't get any hate mail from any loyal Trapcode users out there, let me assure you that nothing's truly impossible within After Effects. Where there's a will, there's a way. So to prove myself wrong before anyone else has to do it for me, we'll approach the same shot using Horizon in the last and final episode of this series. Today, however, I'll be showing you the advantages of working with a cube world, the ability to define absolute position values. Let's get started. Not too long ago, I shot this photo while enjoying a nice day out at Quarry Park. Now that it's been converted to a public facility and any statute of limitations has expired, I can tell you that this is the same place where my somewhat delinquent friends and I used to jump the fence, on occasion, and go exploring against my parents' will. Sorry, Mom and Dad. So, for the sake of days gone by and all the redemption that's happened between then and now, I decided to do a title build in honor of the historic Quarry Park. In my original vision of the shot, what I wanted to do was attach a lens flare that would automatically and interactively track itself to the sun. But since Horizon creates an infinite world for the camera to live in, which is usually a good thing, even using some of my best After Effects know-how, I couldn't find a way to attach this lens flare to the sun. So with necessity as the mother of my invention, we got the cube world. Of course, I could have hand tracked it, but depending on the length of your shot, that's about as fun as getting caught rock climbing on the underside of a bridge by the local authorities. Not that I'd know anything about that. Starting up where we left off last time, let's open the Cube World template and option drag our cube face assets into our world. So, with the top layer selected, we'll grab the top one here. Option, drag, let go. Bottom goes to the bottom, front goes to the front back goes to the back, left, left to the left, and right to the right. To keep things clean, I'm going to delete some of these extra items. So the motion blur, the camera rotator, setup camera, and the color adjustment layer for now, just to keep things clean. Alright, now that our POV anim cam is active, we'll take a look around in our scene, and we're all set to go. To make our lens flare, we'll go layer, new, solid, make it comp size, black, and we'll name this Flare. Click OK to accept that. And now we'll go Effect, Generate, Lens Flare. The next thing we'll want to do is colorize this lens flare to make it sit in our scene a little bit better. So we'll go Effect, Color Correction, Tritone. We'll change the highlights to kind of a yellowish white and the midtones to like a bright orange. Then we'll back off the blend to original to about 40 so it doesn't look quite so orange. But we still need to drop out the black. Now there's two ways to do this. One way is we could change the composite mode to screen. And we get a fairly light lens flare. Another mode that drops out all the black is add. And we get a little more burning lens flare. But I actually prefer to leave it as normal and use a third party plugin. It's developed by Red Giant Software and it's called Null Unmalt, which is a free download. This plugin was designed to be used in conjunction with their lighting package called No Light Factory, and it does a great job dropping out the blacks and giving you super clean edges. This way I can use any composite mode I want, like pin light, to give kind of a burning look to it. That'll look really nice once we get it on the sun. So uh, let's readjust our flare center, click on the middle of the sun, and there we go. So we grab our camera tool and it doesn't interact with the sun. If we convert the layer to a 3D layer, we can spin the camera around, but that doesn't give us the effect we're looking for. So we're going to have to find another solution. So instead, we'll use an expression and a null object to drive our effect. First, we need to locate the layer that contains the object we want to track, which in this case is the sun. So toggling our layers on and off, let's find the layer that, that the sun is attached to. So it's not the top, the bottom, back, nope, left, nope. Right, there it is. Okay, so let's duplicate the right layer and then add our null to a scene from the solids folder. There's a null in here from our template. We can just grab it out of there instead of creating a new one. So we'll just grab any null, drag it down to our timeline, and option, release. 
Now this null lives on the same plane as the right cube face does. So as we orbit, you see how it's changing its orientation there. And now we can just grab, pressing the V key on the keyboard, and grab the axes of the null object and move it into position so that it sits right on the sun. A null object will look a little different than it will normally once you drag it out of your solids folder. So it's actually, um, it's a small solid that usually doesn't have transparency on it, but in this case, uh, that's why it looks that way. So uh, we're not going to need it turned on anyway, so we'll just turn it off and select it here in the timeline, press enter and rename it flare center. Enter. Great. This is the null that we're going to use to drive the flare center effect on our flare layer. But the lens flare is a 2D effect, X, Y, no Z. So we need to write an expression to link the position of our 3D null to our 2D layer effect. So with the flare layer selected, go to lens flare effect and set a keyframe for the flare center. Back down in the timeline, press U on the keyboard to reveal our animated property. Option or alt clicking the flare center stopwatch allows us to write an expression. So we'll take the pick whip and drag it to the name of the flare center null layer and let go. Next, we'll enter a small piece of code, dot to capital C O M P parentheses bracket zero comma zero comma zero bracket parentheses. Now our flare is tracking the position of sun. If we grab our orbit tool, it's attached. Great. This is a step in the right direction. If we don't like what's going on, we can always turn our flare layer back on and uh, just move it into position a little bit differently and that flare will come with us. So uh, I'm going to move it just slightly here to make it really line up with the sun there and then I'll turn that visibility back off. That's great. We have our flare tracking to the sun. In fact, we get two flares. Well, what's going on? The expression tracks the flare to the 3D location of the flare center null. When we rotate our comp around to look at the sun, as the null passes by the camera, the flare center tracks. So we're looking into the flare. When we spin around to look at our other side of the world, the flare layer is directly behind the camera. But since the lens flare is a 2D effect, After Effects can't tell the difference between the back and front of the camera. So we get this behavior. No big deal, we can just keyframe that off. From here, let's add in a camera rotator null just like before to animate our camera. So we'll go to Layer, New, Null Object, select our layer, press Return or Enter on our keyboard, and call it Camera Rotator, and press Enter. Now. Making it a 3D layer, put it next to our animated camera here. We'll parent our camera to the camera rotator. Select the null, press R to reveal its rotation properties, and let's rotate it this way to start with the flare on the right. Go out to about three seconds, and spin it all the way around to the final destination, somewhere around here. Now, obviously, as you guys look at this, you're going, well, the flare, something's weird going on. And you're right. Um, sometimes After Effects will preview this just a little strangely and so one way that I've found to make this work is to go into the flare layer, press U, and at your beginning keyframe just toggle the expression off and back on and it'll find the flare. Then your RAM preview will be right. Sometimes you get some really unpredictable results if you don't do that. So we'll go to our last keyframe, set a work area by pressing the N key and hit zero on the keyboard to have a RAM preview. We've got our lens flare tracking to the sun, and this is perfect. From here, you'll probably want to add in some titles, play with the color, refine the camera move, and make the setup really sing. I had some fun finishing out the shot with some edge blur and internal reflections, like it was shot with a cheap wide-angle lens. But I'm going to assume you can create your own title build based on what we've already discussed in part two of this tutorial set. Remember, even a completed tutorial is just really a starting point. It's up to you to take this information and incorporate something original into your own work. So until next time, I'm Carl Larson for creativecow.net.